My name is Sam Kalisa. Prime Minister Dr. Edouard Ngirinhe has reiterated that Rwanda is committed to fighting climate change and uh, finding long-term solutions to the problem. The Prime Minister uh, made uh, the statement at the ongoing COP26 UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow. The conference is bringing together leaders from around the world and the Rwandan Prime Minister made it clear that Rwanda is not shying away from the responsibility of working to deal with the problem of climate change. Rwanda, like other developing countries, is facing the severe impact on climate change, of climate change. Adaptation is especially critical for countries that are both vulnerable to climate change and bearing the brunt of the effect of global warming. Rwanda is investing in adaptation using domestic funding or co-financing. However, no developing nation will be able to meet its goals without external financing. We all know that uh, to secure global net zero, significant private, private and public sector finance must quickly be made available. At this uh, COP26, let us mobilize the investment needed for vulnerable countries to protect and restore ecosystems with defenses, warning systems and resilient infrastructure, and protect agriculture to avoid the loss of homes, livelihood, and even lives. Six years after committing to providing up to 100 billion US dollars to help developing nations combat the effects of climate change, developed nations are yet to provide the money as they agreed that they would. The six years since the Paris Climate Agreement have been the six hottest years on record. Our addiction to fossil fuels is pushing humanity to the brink. We face a stark choice. Either we stop it or it stops us. And it's time to say enough. The Paris Agreement back in 2015 had countries agreeing to cut greenhouse gas emissions with a view of holding the increase in the global average temperature to well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and pursuing efforts to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Goma residents have been commending the fact that their town is now going to be receiving electricity from Rwanda. They note that it is a good indication of good bilateral relations that now exist between Rwanda and the DRC. Meter pylon runs through Jisenyi town and across the border into the DRC from a newly constructed substation in Rujereru sector. And Goma residents have commended the initiative. We are happy about this as the Congolese people and we appreciate this project because we will benefit vastly from it in our town of Goma. Many residents had no electricity and the advantage lies mainly in the economic activities the town has, things like welding businesses, carpentry and machines for grinding. The entire town will benefit. The residents attribute this and other developments to the political will of the leaders of both countries. Our leaders have been working very hard and we recognize that. Their level of cooperation shows us that we are one people and we should behave like people in the same family, the same region. We have benefited a lot from Rwanda coming to us because we do not have enough flights pulling up the prices of tickets. This has helped bring down transportation costs thanks to increased competition. Top energy officials in Rwanda point out that as long as the country is able to produce more electricity than it uses, it should be able to supply neighboring countries. When you get a lot of electricity from many different sources and put in place transmission lines that meet international standards, that means we will have the capacity to supply Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi and Congo when they need us to do so. That is beneficial, selling our excess energy to our neighbors, including Congo, as you noted, be it here at Goma or Bukavu, which is good. 
The power station in Yamyumba sector that will generate its electricity from methane gas is almost complete and will produce 56 megawatts. The pit power plant at Yisagara will produce 70 megawatts, while another 80 will be sourced from Rusumo. To other matters now, Rwandan senators have begun a three-day retreat during which they will be discussing the Ndumunya Rwanda program and the fundamental responsibilities of the Senate. Officially opening the retreat, the Senate president noted on the importance of such retreats. <laughs> During this retreat, we will first focus on our own performance, the fact that we are Rwandans and what that means for the way we do things. Afterwards, we will then look at the responsibilities we are supposed to perform as quickly as possible, working together and exchanging information while respecting the laws and regulations that govern us. During the retreat, the senators will review in detail the formats in which Ndumunya Rwanda discussions are held. And of course, moving ahead, the senior presidential advisor on security matters, General James Kabarebe, urges the Rwandan youth to learn from the history of the liberation struggle that was spearheaded by people who were then the aid mates and they managed to help the country make it to where it is today. General Kabarebe said this during discussions with 52 youth volunteers who are representing others in Musanze districts. Discussions focused on new strategies that that should characterize these young people. We don't have the details. The liberation struggle became a practical example of a dialogue on patriotism, values and good governance by the senior presidential advisor on security matters to the youth. He explains that the participants led by President Paul Kagame sacrificed their lives and joined the liberation struggle because of the love of the nation which made them enter the fight to stop the genocide that was being perpetrated against the Tutsi. Uh, stopping the genocide against the Tutsi seemed impossible for 19,000 soldiers of RPA versus the 50,000 of the then government soldiers and 30,000 policemen plus the internal Hume militia. The decision to stop the genocide against the Tutsi was the will of the leadership. That's what RPA needed. Resilience, bravery. All of this was made possible due to the good leadership of President Paul Kagame, who was a good example of a good leader. So, uh, if one leader can change the perspective, actions and performance of people at the battleground, being shot and killed. Uh, it explains what good leadership means. A good leader is the one who can handle many things simultaneously. General Kabarebe also told the youth that right now, good governance is not just told stories, but life lived. Uh, you cannot get good governance and leadership from anywhere else. You live it. If you all want, you can now write and publish books about good leadership and values, uh, not from anywhere else, but what you have lived and experienced here. The youth that attended the deliberations said the discussions were indeed challenging and helpful and committed to following advices given to them. The five-day deliberations are expected to end on Tuesday where the youth will have a chat with the Inspector General of the Rwanda National Police. To health matters now, health officials in Rwanda have decided to close some of the hospitals that were receiving COVID-19 patients, seeing that uh, the vast majority of infections are now among vaccinated individuals and that they go under home best care. We visited the Nyarujenje District Hospital to find a sole COVID-19 patient surrounded by 130 empty beds. Victoria Mukambonigaba told us that she comes from Nyagatari District of the Eastern Province and that she is 78 years old, but that she never got vaccinated against the virus. She is fortunate because she has improved significantly since being transferred to the hospital and should make a full recovery. We then went to the Kanyinya Centre. 
the first open in the country to receive COVID-19 patients when the pandemic first broke out, and it stood empty, with none of its 90 beds occupied. Kanyinya will be the only COVID-19 centre to remain on standby to provide care to critically ill patients. Uh, as you can see, uh, this room, uh, it's meant to be an ICU. You can see the machines, the ventilators, but uh, we are very happy that the room is empty. The room is empty because uh, we no longer have a patient inside, though we are ready. In any case, if you can receive a patient who is critical, we are in a position to help the patient. Uh, this means a lot to us as at the centre. Uh, when the room is empty, it means that we don't have patients who are in need of oxygen. Uh, and the, the other issue is uh, if you have a rook on how the number have reduced, goes hands in hands with the reduction of number of critical patients. As you can see, it is self-proven. We no longer have a patient in ICU. Other hospitals like Nyarujenje will now provide regular medical services and not have to deal with COVID cases. Muri no minsi twabikoreshaga kugira ngo twite ku barwayi barembye bafite indwara ya covid ariko aho tugana We had been using this hospital to treat critical covid cases but now we are going to be using only the Kanyunya center and this hospital will go back to being a regular one for Nyarugenge district Bitaro byongere gukora nk'ibitaro by'akarere Kanyarugenge As the holiday season approaches health officials are alert Lest complacency among members of the general public leads to another spike in COVID cases. We are approaching the holiday season and people are bound to be tempted to party as if they are making up for missed opportunities to do so in the recent past. And from what we have seen in other countries, that is what brings about problems. We are therefore urging people not to think that the pandemic has passed. The low numbers of infections we are seeing are the result of large numbers of people getting vaccinated, as well as other measures. But we must not think that it's over. The infection rate in Kigali is currently at 0.5%, while countrywide it is at 1%. Rwanda is now hosting the 2021 International Conference on Land Policy in Africa under the theme Land Governance for Safeguarding Art, Culture and Heritage Towards the Africa We Want. The conference is featuring different uh, dignitaries that include the German Ambassador to Rwanda, the Permanent Secretary in Rwanda's Ministry of Environment, the Country Manager of the African Development Bank and the Director of the East African sub-regional office of the United Nations. Derek Mohanji has the details. The German ambassador to Rwanda has noted the different stages of partnership his country has with Rwanda. He notes that despite challenges, significant achievements have been made in the partnership. Um, you have been asking for achievements. Yes, there are a number of them, uh, although there are some challenges still ahead. Um, what we do have achieved is we have implemented a comprehensive analysis of existing curricula for land policy of African universities as a starting point. Then we have developed guidelines for curricula on, on land governance in Africa for master's and PhD programs. Uh, we, have or, we have already awarded 41 scholarships for students at different universities in Africa well, and, uh, and in addition we have uh, facilitated a certain a number of research programs in, in the same regard. I think that's about what, I, what I'm in a position to, to share with you at this point. The permanent secretary in Rwanda's Ministry of Environment has observed on the progress the country has been making when it comes to land rights through legal reform and the proper management of natural resources. This is a four-day conference, and on this day, one of the preceding discussions unveiled that there is still a long way to go before all African countries can better understand the land management policy. Derek Mohanji, reporting for RTV. On behalf of the entire news production team that made it happen, thank you very much for being with us. My name is Sam Kalisa. Stay safe and have a fruitful week ahead. Mm -hmm.